go. First point when it comes to procrastination, is your to-do list too chaotic? Is it too much? Okay. That is a worthwhile consideration. And I'll give you a really important um, tool to help you figure out if it is too chaotic or not. Ask yourself this, be honest, look yourself in the mirror or look at the to-do list and, and say, are you achieving these things frequently? Okay. Or ha- I mean, has the to-do list changed? That's an even better question because if the to-do list hasn't changed, then it's probably too chaotic. Okay. Cause you're not getting anything done. If, if you've had the same to-do list for about three months, you need to, you need to calm that fella down. Okay. It could be that your tasks are too ambiguous as well and there's a lack of specificity, which is actually my second point when it comes to procrastination. We will come back to that in a second. But if your to-do list hasn't changed at all, then there's probably too much on there. Or you're probably not interested in actually completing those things that you are, that you think you need to do, but maybe you don't need to do them. You know, maybe you don't want to read that book. Maybe you actually don't want to work out and go to the gym because the way you like to stay fit is doing a tango, going to a, going to a salsa class, you know, going for a run. Like when it comes to ticking things off, which I think is really important, that sense of progress is really, really fulfilling. That feeling like we're getting things done. And there's a really um, conclusive point to that in terms of what's going on in the brain, the body, the neurochemistry behind progress. Um, That's, the positive emotion that we want to feel. Don't don't need to get into that. But if you don't, if you're not actually ticking things off, it could be one of those reasons. It's too chaotic. You know, you'd actually don't enjoy the tasks that you've set out for yourself. There's a difference between enjoying them and then being challenging and then also being challenging and boring. You know, you don't want to have a boring life. Your to-do list should excite you. It should be challenging, but it should excite you. It should be like, who am I going to be when I've got this stuff done? Okay. That's really exciting and rewarding and fulfilling, you know, getting back to this second point. Now tasks being too ambiguous. I have found this a lot when doing this kind of work with my clients, like goal setting and setting frameworks for our lives, because that's how we, um, you know, reduce that sense of existential confusion with who we are and what we're doing. We need frameworks. Who are you now? Who do you want to be in six months time? What's your point A look like? What's your point B going to look like? Okay. Does that excite you? Who you want to become? If not, we need to have a greater discussion around who you think you want to become. Excuse me. Tasks being too ambiguous. Okay. There is a difference between setting a tasks, setting a tough, excuse me. I've just, I've had so much, God, after that three day fast, I had literally just bone broth and water. And now I've had a massive smoothie, a whole bunch of eggs and avocado and pumpkin seeds. I've had some salmon. Um, I've had some jalapenos. I've had a coffee. I'm on fire right now. <laughs> I'll probably crash in a couple of hours. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. I won't keep it live on Facebook for you. Um, so tasks being too ambiguous. There is a difference between setting a task for yourself, saying something like market music and uh, and posting one Facebook video um, of me playing the guitar and singing. You see how that with that greater sense of specificity, what we're trying to do here is reduce the amount of decisions you have to make because the more decisions you have to make, the more chaotic it feels. So that goes back into point one of procrastination and the more work you feel like you have to do we want to just be able to, like I have here, and this has taken me years to figure out, right? But we want to get to the point where we can literally just tick or put a line and we know that that job is done. Then we don't have to think so much. And then what we actually feel like we need to do gets done. It's such an important, um, it's a great feeling and and we know that we're moving the needle towards those goals. The point B, becoming who we want to be. If we want to be a writer, break that down. Obviously, you have to write the book. Maybe day one, you have to write the contents page. It's not just write if you don't know what that's like, okay? Maybe it's what's the fundamental question you are trying to answer in this book. So getting back to that point of the music, it's like it's too ambiguous to write something like 
market music. What we want to be thinking of is how specifically are you going to do that so that when you sit at your desk for the day or when you look at your to-do list for the day or the week, you know exactly what you have to do. So you can just find the flow straight away. 